Have you ever wondered what lies hidden in the depths of Russia's dark forests? What ancient secrets and terrifying legends are whispered among the trees? Can you imagine stumbling upon a place so haunted that it chills your soul to the core? This is the true story of Volkov Manor, the most terrifying mansion in Russia's haunted forest. Deep within the remote forests of Russia, surrounded by towering pines and shrouded in perpetual mist, lies an ancient mansion known as Volkov Manor. Built in the late 1800s by a wealthy and eccentric nobleman named Ivan Volkov, the manor has been the subject of countless local legends and ghost stories. It is said that the mansion is cursed, and those who dare to enter are never the same again. Ivan Volkov was a man of peculiar interests, dabbling in the occult and dark arts. His obsession with the supernatural led him to construct Volkov Manor on a site rumored to be a powerful convergence of spiritual energy. The mansion was designed with hidden chambers, secret passageways, and elaborate rituals etched into its very walls. After his mysterious disappearance, the manor was abandoned and left to the ravages of time. The story of Volkov Manor truly begins in the summer of 1994, when a group of four friends from Moscow, Alexei, Mikhail, Irina, and Katya, decided to embark on a camping trip in the forest. They had heard the rumors of the haunted mansion but dismissed them as mere folklore. Eager for adventure, they set out to find and explore the legendary Volkov Manor. As they ventured deeper into the forest, a thick fog began to envelop them, and the sunlight dimmed casting eerie shadows among the trees. The atmosphere grew heavy with an unsettling silence, broken only by the occasional rustle of leaves. The friends pressed on, their excitement mingling with a growing sense of dread. After hours of trekking, they finally arrived at the mansion. The sight of Volkov Manor was both awe-inspiring and terrifying. The once grand structure now stood in a state of decay, with ivy crawling up its stone walls and windows shattered like jagged teeth. The air around the manor was thick with an oppressive energy that seemed to seep into their very bones. Ignoring the warning signs, the friends entered the mansion, their footsteps echoing through the vast, empty halls. The interior was a labyrinth of dusty rooms and dark corridors, each corner holding the promise of hidden horrors. As they explored, they discovered strange symbols carved into the walls and floors, remnants of the occult rituals performed by Ivan Volkov. In one of the rooms, they found a large ornate mirror covered with a heavy cloth. Curiosity got the better of them, and they unveiled the mirror. As they stared into its depths, they saw not their own reflections, but twisted and grotesque images of themselves, distorted by an otherworldly force. Panic set in, and they quickly covered the mirror, but the damage was done. Their presence had awakened something malevolent within the manor. That night, as they set up camp inside the mansion, strange occurrences began to unfold. They heard whispers echoing through the halls, though no one else was there. Shadows moved of their own accord, and cold, clammy hands seemed to brush against them in the dark. The friends' nerves were frayed, but they convinced themselves it was just their imaginations running wild. However, the terror escalated when they encountered the spirit of Ivan Volkov himself. His ghostly figure appeared before them, his eyes burning with an unholy fire. He spoke in a voice that resonated with both menace and sorrow, recounting his tragic tale and the curse that bound him to the mansion. He warned them to leave before it was too late but the friends were paralyzed with fear. In a desperate bid to escape, they tried to leave the mansion, but the doors and windows had sealed shut. The manor seemed to be alive, trapping them within its walls. Their fear turned to hysteria as they realized they were not alone. Ghostly apparitions of Ivan's victims began to manifest, their tortured souls seeking vengeance. Mikhail, the most skeptical of the group, decided to confront the spirits head-on. Armed with a makeshift torch, he ventured into the heart of the mansion. 
The others watched in horror as he was engulfed by a swirling vortex of darkness, his screams echoing through the halls. When the darkness subsided, Mikhail was gone, leaving only the torch behind. As the night wore on, the remaining friends were subjected to relentless torment. Irina saw visions of her own death, reliving the moment over and over again. Katya was plagued by whispers that drove her to the brink of madness. Alexei, the group's leader, struggled to keep them together, but the weight of the supernatural assault was too much to bear. In a final, desperate act, Alexei remembered a passage from an old book he had read about breaking curses. He gathered Irina and Katya, and together they performed a ritual to banish the malevolent spirits. As they chanted the incantation, the air grew thick with an electric charge, and a blinding light filled the room. When the light faded, the oppressive energy lifted, and the mansion fell silent. The doors and windows unlocked, allowing them to flee the accursed place. As they stumbled out into the dawn, they vowed never to speak of what had transpired within Volkov Manor. Years later, the story of their harrowing ordeal spread through the local villages, adding another chapter to the legend of Volkov Manor. The mansion still stands, a silent sentinel in the heart of Russia's dark forest, waiting for the next unsuspecting souls to dare its haunted halls. And so, the question remains, would you dare to venture into Volkov Manor? Can you face the terror that lies within? Remember, this is not just a story. This is a true account of the horrors that await in Russia's most haunted mansion. This story of Volkov Manor is a chilling reminder of the unknown dangers that lurk in the shadows. If you ever find yourself in the dark forests of Russia, heed the warnings and steer clear of the haunted mansion. For those who enter may never return the same again. This is a true story about the most haunted place I have ever encountered. This story takes place in a remote village where a mansion stood abandoned for decades. Hollowbrook Manor was a place of legend, a place everyone in the village whispered about but no one dared to enter. Years ago, Hollowbrook Manor was home to the Hollowbrook family, who mysteriously disappeared one by one until none were left. The house had a dark history of untimely deaths and inexplicable events. No one wanted to live there, and over time, the manor fell into disrepair. Yet the stories of ghostly apparitions, eerie sounds, and strange occurrences never stopped. One day, a group of four friends, Sarah, Mike, Jessica, and Tom, decided to investigate the manor. They had heard the stories growing up and were intrigued by the mystery. They planned to spend a night in the manor, documenting their experience to see if the legends were true. They brought cameras, flashlights, and a Ouija board, thinking it would be a fun and thrilling adventure. As the sun set, the friends arrived at Hollowbrook Manor. The house looked like it came straight out of a nightmare, with broken windows, creaky doors, and an overwhelming sense of dread. The air was thick with an unexplainable heaviness, they pushed open the front door, which groaned in protest, and stepped inside. The floorboards creaked beneath their feet, and the smell of decay filled their nostrils. They set up their cameras and began to explore the house. Almost immediately, they felt an icy chill that had nothing to do with the weather. Sarah, who was sensitive to paranormal activity, began to feel uneasy. She heard whispers that seemed to come from nowhere and shadows moved just beyond her line of sight. The others laughed it off, attributing it to nerves and their imagination. They decided to split up to cover more ground. Mike and Jessica headed to the basement, while Sarah and Tom stayed on the main floor. The basement was dark and damp, with an old furnace and a series of strange symbols painted on the walls. As Mike and Jessica investigated, their flashlight flickered and died. They felt a sudden drop in temperature and heard a faint, ghostly wail. Jessica screamed as something cold and invisible brushed against her skin. Upstairs, Sarah and Tom decided to use the Ouija board. 
they lit candles and sat on the dusty floor. As they began to ask questions, the planchette moved on its own. It spelled out, leave, repeatedly. Tom, thinking it was Sarah playing a prank, laughed, but Sarah's face was pale with fear. She swore she wasn't moving it. The planchette then spelled out help and danger. The candles flickered wildly and a door slammed shut somewhere in the house. Reuniting in the living room, the friends decided to stick together. They discovered a hidden door behind a large, dusty portrait. The door led to a narrow staircase that descended into darkness. Despite their fear, curiosity drove them to explore. They descended into what seemed like a secret room. The room was filled with old books, strange artifacts, and a diary. Jessica began to read the diary aloud. It belonged to the last member of the Hollowbrook family, Eleanor. The diary detailed Eleanor's descent into madness as she spoke of an evil presence that haunted the house. She wrote about seeing figures in the mirrors, hearing voices that weren't there, and feeling an ever-present darkness. The final entry was a frantic scrawl. It wants me. I cannot escape. Do not stay in this house. It will take you too. As Jessica read the last words, they heard footsteps above them, even though they knew they were alone in the house. The temperature dropped again and the air became suffocating. Suddenly, they felt an overwhelming sense of dread. The door to the hidden room slammed shut, trapping them inside. Desperate to escape, they tried to open the door, but it wouldn't budge. The lights of their flashlights flickered and then went out, plunging them into darkness. They heard whispers growing louder, turning into a cacophony of screams. Shadows moved around them, and they felt cold hands grabbing at them. Panic set in as they realized they might not make it out alive. In a last-ditch effort, Tom threw himself against the door and it finally gave way. They ran up the stairs, the shadows chasing them, and burst out of the manor. Gasping for breath, they vowed never to return. As they drove away, they looked back at the house. In the window, they saw a pale face watching them, a face twisted in a malevolent grin. The friends never spoke of that night again, but they couldn't escape the memories. They would wake up in the middle of the night, hearing whispers and seeing shadows in their homes. Hollowbrook Manor had left its mark on them, a mark that would never fade. The village continued to whisper about the house, and it remained abandoned, a monument to the horrors that lurked within. Remember, this is a true story. If you ever find yourself near Hollowbrook Manor, heed the warnings and stay away. Some mysteries are better left unsolved. Enter the eerie world of Echoes in the Dark, where malevolent spirits and ancient curses lurk in every shadow. Can you survive the darkness? James was thrilled when his professor asked him to house-sit for the summer. The professor's home was an old, sprawling mansion located in the countryside, far from the noise and bustle of the city. It was the perfect place for James to focus on his studies and enjoy some peace and quiet. The house was filled with antiques and strange artifacts from the professor's travels. It had a certain charm, though James found it a bit eerie at times. He settled in, unpacking his belongings and exploring the rooms. The professor had warned him about the basement, advising him to stay away from it due to its dangerous, unfinished state. The first few nights were uneventful, but soon, James began to notice strange things happening around the house. He would hear whispers and footsteps at night, as if someone were walking through the halls. He saw fleeting shadows from the corner of his eye, but whenever he turned to look, there was nothing there. James dismissed these occurrences as his imagination playing tricks on him. After all, the house was old, and old houses made noises. But as the days went by, the incidents became more frequent and harder to ignore. One night, James woke up to the sound of a door creaking open. He sat up in bed, heart pounding, and listened. The sound stopped, and the house was silent again. He got up to check, 
finding nothing out of place. But as he returned to his room, he saw a shadowy figure standing at the end of the hallway, watching him. The figure disappeared before he could react. Determined to find out what was going on, James began to investigate the house. He found old diaries and journals in the professor's study, detailing the family's history. The entries were filled with strange, cryptic references to rituals and dark magic. James discovered a locked room in the basement with strange symbols carved into the door frame. He managed to pick the lock and entered the room, finding it filled with bizarre artifacts and more of the cryptic symbols. The air was thick with an oppressive, malevolent presence. As James delved deeper into the professor's research, he realized the family had been involved in occult practices for generations. They had performed rituals to summon and bind spirits, trapping them in the house. The spirits, angry and vengeful, were now lashing out at anyone who entered their domain. The more James uncovered, the more the spirit's activity intensified. He experienced vivid nightmares, waking up with scratches and bruises on his body. Objects would move on their own, and the whispers grew louder and more menacing. James knew he had to find a way to banish the spirits before they claimed him as their next victim. He scoured the professor's notes for any information on how to perform a cleansing ritual. The instructions were detailed and complex, but he was determined to succeed. One night, the spirits became more aggressive than ever. Doors slammed shut, windows shattered, and James felt an unseen force pushing and pulling at him. He knew he had to act quickly. Gathering the necessary items for the ritual, James descended into the basement. The air grew colder and the oppressive presence intensified. He could hear the spirits whispering, their voices filled with anger and malice. As James began the ritual, the spirits attacked. They lashed out with unseen hands trying to stop him. He pushed through the pain and fear, reciting the incantations and performing the necessary actions. The room shook, and the symbols on the walls glowed with an eerie light. The spirits grew more desperate, their attacks becoming more violent. James felt himself weakening, but he knew he couldn't stop. With one final effort, he completed the ritual, a blinding light filling the room. The spirits screamed in rage and pain as they were banished from the house. The oppressive presence lifted, and the room fell silent. James collapsed, exhausted, but relieved. He had succeeded in freeing the house from its tormentors. James left the house the next morning, his body and mind battered but intact. He contacted his professor, who returned to find his home cleansed of the spirits that had plagued it for so long. James vowed never to return to the mansion, the memories of his ordeal haunting him. He returned to his studies, but he could never forget the echoes in the dark and the spirits he had faced.